In the early 15th century, Chinese merchants started sailing across great oceans to the Malay archipelago and beyond in search of trade opportunities. These Chinese ships were filled with large quantities of tea, silks and porcelains. Eventually, some of these merchants settled in the region and intermarried with the local women. Their descendants are known as the Peranakans. The term Peranakan is used to describe a local born. The men are known as Baba and the women are known as Nyonya. However, the Peranakans also love to recount the romantic tale between the Chinese princess Hang Li Po of the Ming Dynasty and Sultan Mansur Shah of Malacca as the setting for their presence in the region. The Peranakan culture in itself is a hybrid of the Chinese and local cultures, layered with Portuguese, Dutch and later English influences due to colonization. These influences are reflected in the homes and lifestyles of the Peranakans. Let's take a walk into the Peranakan world. A typical Peranakan house is eclectic in style, harmoniously combining all the different influences into a style of its own. Most of the Peranakan homes are in Dutch-built shop houses. These buildings are quite narrow due to the Dutch collecting taxes based on the width of the house. There are usually two floors. On the first floor, there's a reception hall, ancestral hall, dining hall, courtyard and kitchen and on the second floor are the bedrooms and wedding chamber. I used to... I learned how to ride bicycle in the house. Because the house is long. Right? This, uh, when I tell people I learned how to ride bicycle in the house, they say, Hey, you crazy, uh, you ride bicycle in the house? I say, yes, but the house is long. The Peranakans, despite having adapted to the local lifestyle, have still retained many of its Chinese culture and traditions. Their houses are decorated with lots of Chinese influences, like lanterns, wooden furniture with marble and mother-of-pearl inlays, religious statues and porcelains. The Peranakans also added European elements to their houses, like Dutch tiles, Scottish cast-iron handrails, Victorian aperns and lamps. Some of the furniture in the house are also of European influence, like the dressing table and dining table set. The wedding chamber is the most elaborately decorated part of the house. It is filled with carved furniture lacquered in auspicious red and gilded in gold. The bed is also covered in silk, embroidered with Chinese auspicious symbols like birds, peonies and butterflies. Marriage was not about romance or falling in love. It was a duty. It was a dutiful obligation to this person that your parents have brought to be your wife. And you have this dutiful obligation to her or him for the rest of your life. If there are young girls in a home, they are not allowed to meet with men or to be seen by men too much. So that's why the trellis, you know, the lattice screening to hide them. So when visitors come, you as a proper nonya will not be sitting down and listening, you know, uh, to conversations. You have to disappear. So you go behind. So people don't see you. So how do they get married if they don't meet guys? You are matchmaking. So, and, and it's mother and father who decides, or even grandmother who decides. So, how do they go about it? That is then uh, the matchmaker. And when your daughter is of age, you will probably send her send for the matchmaker, or your son is of age. But there's one practice that uh, nonyas do, and it's chap gome. On the 15th night of the new year, they bring their daughters up to throw oranges. And hopefully, some guys from some good families will notice their daughters and then ask for the hand in marriage. The traditional Peranakan wedding is a grand affair that takes a long time to prepare and lasts for 12 days. Wealthy Peranakan families would even hire a personal goldsmith to make customized jewelry for them. The traditional wedding attires of the Peranakans are very Chinese in style, heavily embroidered with gold and silver threads. Embroidery motifs include the dragon and phoenix, which symbolizes that the couple complement each other. Other common symbols include the golden lotus, which signifies purity and innocence, and the Japanese lily, which symbolizes 10,000 years of harmony and union. Nonyas like pretty things. 
I, we love pretty things. As long as it's, um, it's of aesthetic value, we will adopt it. We bring in a, our Chinese religion. We are dressed in Chinese traditional uh, wedding clothes. Most of our culture is very Chinese, except for our, uh, the clothes we wear. As you can see, we wear a sarong, and uh, the sarong is very Malay. But Nonyas also wear uh, Western clothes, you know. Ah, we will wear Western clothes, and sometimes if if we are in the mood, we can even wear a sari. Uh, even our our jewelry, we don't mind if it's Indian influence as long as it makes us pretty. We are happy to adopt it. The Nonyas would usually wear the kabaya, which consists of an embroidered blouse and a batik sarong. The blouse has no buttons and is fastened together with a set of three brooches made of gold or silver and embellished with gemstones. The babas, on the other hand, would wear a long-sleeved mandarin jacket and a pair of trousers. During the British colonization, the babas started to favor the Western style of dressing and began wearing suits. When the babas are busy doing business outside, the nyonyas stay at home to do household chores. They would help out in the kitchen and prepare meals for the day. Peranakan food basically combines Chinese cooking techniques with locally found ingredients. Some of these ingredients include coconut milk, belachan, galangal, tamarind, lemongrass, chilies and pandan leaves. For starters, we have uh, the loba, which is meat roll, like a sausage. And then, of course, it's uh, uh, spiced with the five spices and uh, chukor and chestnuts. So, while it's meat, once in a while you get a crunch of the chestnut. And then we have the smoked, uh, finely diced vegetable, which is uh, normal. We serve that for weddings and for um, Chinese India. And the prawn, that prawn is uh, it's black, but it's not black sauce, you know. It's tamarind. And when tamarind is uh, deep fried, then it becomes black like this. So it was uh, seasoned with tamarind and pepper for a long time. And nasi ulam is again all the herbs and spices. And this one is actually also used for um, when after a woman gives birth, delivers, the, during the confinement, the 30 days of confinement, we will suffer that because it's supposed to uh, expel all the wind in your body. The Nyonyas spend a great deal of time making the beaded shoes that they wear with their kabayas. In Castle Monet, of course, there was this uh, uh, embroidered slippers using silken threads. And before they did second stitch, in fact, the early stitches were um, the forbidden knots. That means they, they actually, the pattern of a flower arose. It's made up of multiple little knots. So the, 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 the middle is darker shade, right? So dark red knots and then goes up to lighter things and all that. And these are made of knots. And then uh, later they had certain, which is like certain stitches. And then they discovered the uh, gold and silver threads. With some specific patterns, they were used for wedding slippers. And then of course then came the Kasumanet. During their leisure time, the Nyonyas also love to play Cherky and dance. I wasn't interested in the Peranakan culture until I reached the age of 50. One thing I regretted, okay, I regret very much that I never learned from my mother. She, she is a very, very good cook and I never learned from her. And that is my one regret that I never learned to cook like my mother did. I have a friend who grew up in KL and he 
is almost 40 now and he was not aware of his Pranakan heritage until the day of his wedding a Pranakan who grew up in a modern setting eh, where you were not being exposed to this culture and you were not even being told so that is why uh, the Pranakan identity would cease to exist because there's no knowledge or there's not even um, awareness in in your own identity so when i reach 50 i suppose you realize suddenly you know sort of like midlife crisis uh, we, we suddenly realize oh what are my roots and that's when i started you know getting more kabayas uh, buying sarongs getting interested in uh, what the Peranakan culture is like. The Peranakan culture is now slowly fading away due to globalization and modernization. Many customs and traditions are not passed down and are therefore forgotten. This is not specific to the Peranakan culture, but all cultures around the world, as the younger generations are not interested in the traditional culture and are embracing the modern and fast-paced world. There is an old Chinese saying about fallen leaves returning to the roots. No matter where life takes you, don't forget where you came from. <laughs>